Hello everyone. Okay, so I have deliberately started where the first coastal management video finished to give you <laughs> just some sense of how all this fits together. Okay, so we're in coastal management. You should already have watched the introductory video. If you haven't, I would go and do that one first. This one accompanies pages 44 and 45 of your module because there's lots of writing there for you already. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this video is we're going to go through all the hard engineering techniques, all of the soft, and I'm basically just going to show you photographs and images of them and talk to you about how they work because you have the writing on pages 44 and 45 already. Brilliant. Okay, sea walls. Um, kind of give you quite a big clue about what they are, don't they? Now, what I'm going to emphasise is how these are hard engineering techniques. And if we go back to the definition of hard engineering, it says involves artificial, often concrete, man-made structures designed to interfere with natural coastal processes. That wall is definitely going to stop erosion. The waves are going to hit the wall, they're not going to hit the land behind, it's definitely man-made, it's definitely made out of concrete. So sea walls, you get loads of different sizes and shapes, uh, sometimes with steps, sometimes curved. Um, they're very expensive, they're brilliant, they work really, really effectively, but they are very, very expensive. Um, and you need to obviously slightly alter your seawall depending on your particular stretch of coastline, um, whether you need to allow tourist access. Most of them have a slightly curved nature, and that's, so the idea of this one here is, if a wave hit that, the curved shape makes the energy deflect, it sends the coastal energy, uh, sorry, the wave energy back out again, and, and uh, there's often some sort of sense of that if you have a straight one. If you have a sloping one like that, then it's slightly different anyway. Okay, so seawalls, really effective, really expensive. Groins. Now, please be careful with your spelling of these. Uh, there is a different type of groin, which, um, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to read about. Thank you very much. So, groins with a Y are structures sometimes made out of wood, sometimes made out of concrete, all sorts. It doesn't matter what they're made out of. What's important is that they are built at right angles to your beach. So these stick out into the sea and they have one purpose. Their job is to stop longshore drift. Okay, so in this image, longshore drift is clearly going in that direction. And you can see the beach is wider here than it is here. And that's because this groin, which is made out of a pile of stones, is stopping sediment and making the beach wider. Here, clearly longshore drift is going in that direction. And I know it's hard to tell, but there's a big height difference between here and here. And that's because the groin is stopping the sediment here. And then you get this big difference. So the point of groins is to stop longshore drift because beaches are natural coastal defences. They are really good at protecting the land behind them. It's a really simple principle. If the wave hits the beach, the land behind is protected. So what your groins do is they widen your beach and then your beach protects the land. So these are really good. They do have to be replaced quite frequently. Uh, they get damaged quite easily, but quite, quite a clever idea. One problem though, is we know that the coast is a system. And if you're stopping longshore drift on one part of the coastline, it's going to have knock-on effects further down that coastline because that further down bit is gonna be starved of sediment. And that is a big problem. Um, something we definitely need to think about with sediment cells and things like that. And we'll be looking at that when we get to a case study. It um, has relevance to Lyme Regis, it has relevance to Holden S, and probably other case studies that you might know as well. Okay, rip wrap, aka rock armour, doesn't matter what you call it, either of those. Uh, this is rip wrap at Dawlish, this is rip wrap at Lyme Regis. You might 
recognise. Um, what you're looking for with riprap or rock armour is a big pile of rocks. It's not particularly attractive, um, but the principle is very simple. When you've got big powerful waves in storms, the waves will hit this riprap and most of the, the wave energy will be taken out by these stones and you deliberately choose rocks that are very hard. Um, this rock here, in case you're interested, is called Labradorite, um, and it was imported from Norway, I think, because it was so hard, and the people planning Lyme Regis knew that it would last a long time. I think Dawlish Warren is granite, probably from Dartmoor, so you deliberately choose a really, really hard rock. Okay. Now, revetments. If you look at a photo, it's often a little bit tricky. So that's a revetment and that's rock armour. Revetments can be made of stone or wood or sometimes a combination of the two. Can I just make you notice that the rip wrap or the rock armour is kind of a pile of rocks, whereas that's more of a layer. Now, I'll be honest with you, if they decide to ask you this in an exam, they're going to make it really obvious and I would imagine they're going to use uh, this kind of an image. They're not trying to deliberately catch you out, ladies and gents, that's not their job. So a revetment is more of a coating of protective material. Um, this one, slightly different principle, but quite clever. So here's the eroding coastline and here's the beach and the revetment is built on the beach, isn't it? So it's a really simple idea. Now the waves are going to break here, because anything that makes the water, sorry, the water shallower is going to make your wave break. So if the waves are taking most of their energy out on this, the land behind is going to be protected. Notice that what we keep coming back to is trying to interfere with or stop nature. And that's the point of hard engineering. Gabions, they're easy to recognise. They're cages of stones. And you may well have seen them driving along a motorway. Um, they also get used to kind of uh, give bank support either sides of roads. Gabions uh, are often used if you have quite weak geology. So if your coastline is quite weak and it erodes quite easily, you get loads of much more resistant stones. The reason you put them in the cages is to keep them in place. Because if you didn't have them in cages, coastal processes would move them along quite quickly whereas if they're in these cages they're going to stay put and then instead of having this uh, quite weak uh, rock that's being attacked you're, you've got this much harder rock that's going to protect you. I think you'll agree um, they're quite ugly. People don't like this as a coastal management strategy particularly because they just don't look very nice. Barrages. Right, now barrages are quite different. We've got two potential examples. This is the Thames Barrier and that's Cardiff Bay. Now these are nothing to do with erosion and you need to kind of get maybe put um, a highlighted box around this part of the table on page 44 or a big asterisk or I don't know something. These are not about protecting coastlines from erosion. These are about protecting coastlines from flooding, which we haven't really covered in the syllabus yet. We will be, but it's a fairly obvious thing, isn't it? If you have a massive storm or a really, really high tide, you could have flooding of your coastline. So there's a YouTube clip there which explains how the Thames barrier works and how it protects London. Um, because London is actually quite low-lying and therefore at risk. Um, so that's one barrage. Cardiff Bay. So some of you might have done Cardiff for your urban rebranding case study, in which case um, it's worth just knowing a little bit about Cardiff Bay barrage. Cardiff Bay used to be tidal, because all coastlines in the UK are, but when they were rebranding um, Cardiff Bay, they decided that when the tide went out, it just didn't look very nice. It was muddy, it was a bit smelly, um, it wasn't very attractive. So they decided that they would build this barrier 
to stop the tide going out. It's that simple, ladies and gents. And now, because the water is there all the time, it's a much more attractive area and Cardiff Bay is a much nice, nicer place to be. So barrages are definitely about interfering with natural processes, but they are not linked with stopping erosion. Okay. And then finally, for your um, hard engineering on page 44, you have these things. In my first video on coastal management, I incorrectly told you this was Exmouth. This is Sidmouth. I did correct myself, but just want to emphasise it. Sidmouth in Devon and offshore breakwaters. Now these are an example of advance the line. So you might actually build a structure out in the sea. These are quite simple really. And I've included the red arrow to make the point. Generally speaking in uh, the UK, the wind comes from the south west, which is the direction that the red arrow is pointing in. If the wind is coming from the southwest, uh, then the fetch, which is the distance that the wind has been blowing over, is potentially about two and a half thousand miles. You could get some massive waves. So rather than letting your waves attack Sidmouth, why don't you build an obstacle, an obstruction, to take the brunt force of those waves. And that is what those do. So you can see them from a different angle here. All right, so they're quite simple, um, but quite effective. Um, Plymouth, also in Devon. This is uh, the, um, what's it called? Plymouth Sound, oh, I can't remember its name. It's a massive offshore breakwater that you can actually see on this map um, and this is to protect uh, this harbour a little bit. This is a naval dockyard, um, it's a really important ferry port, it's a fishing area. They need the conditions in Plymouth Sound to be quite calm and quite quiet for shipping. So if you have this breakwater it's going to take some of the energy out of your waves. Right. So. That's all of the hard engineering options. Shouldn't need to write very much because it should all be written on page 44. It's just about recognising them, making sure you understand how they work and that sort of thing. Um, of course, if you want to print out any photographs, if you're quite a visual learner and you think that drawing them or having some photos, this PowerPoint is called Coastal Management Methods and it's in the posts folder. So you could print, print it off maybe if you think that would be useful. So the next video clearly is going to go through the soft engineering. Okay.